This is an important public service announcement for feline-loving cannabis consumers. I'm sure we all have at least thought about smoking of a cat. Maybe you've even done it, maybe you're totally against it. This is not a moral preaching, and I'm not even going to touch the debate on whether it's ethically right to make another creature get intoxicated. This is not about that. This is just a quick, but really, really important science lesson. You ready? Alright, let's talk about terpenes and glucuronidation. Terpenes are organic compounds usually produced by plants. The word terpene is derived from the word turpentine, which is a distillation of tree resin. Turpentine is incidentally made entirely of terpenes. These aromatic hydrocarbons are also found in many other plants and plant products. Terpenes and terpenoids are the base of all essential plant oils and plant resin. For example, vitamin A, menthol, and salvia divinorum are all terpenes. Terpenes are responsible for the unique smell and taste of cannabis. Cannabis plants produce more than 120 different kinds of terpenes. Many of these terpenes bind to the cannabinoid receptors in your brain and immune system, and thus they're actually responsible for a significant part of the psychoactive and medicinal effects of cannabis. Drug-sniffing dogs incidentally detect one of these terpenes, not THC. This terpene is called carophylline, which is surprisingly also responsible for the spiciness of black pepper. Terpenes and cannabinoids are lipid-soluble, not water-soluble. So, in order for your body to process these substances, many of them have to undergo a process called glucuronidation in your liver during the second phase of xenobotic metabolism. This makes the molecules water-soluble so that the body can excrete and eliminate them. Incidentally, the metabolite of THC that urine drug tests look for is THC glucuronide. The enzymes that catalyze the glucuronidation are called UDP glucuronosyltransferases. We'll just call them UGTs from now on. All members of the Felis family, from the mighty panther to your furry best friend, have some mutations in their genetic code. The UGT gene, UGT1A6, has mutated in cats to the point where it cannot make that proper UGT enzyme. This enzyme is responsible for glucuronidating plant-based substances. These plant substances can't be metabolized by cats, so they end up with, they eat the substances with buildup in their soft tissue and organs, exactly the same way that lead and other heavy metals can result in poisoning. This is the reason that such a wide variety of medicines and plants, everything from acetaminophen to essential oils, are poisonous to cats. The way that they survived with this sort of mutation is that cats are hyper-carnivores, meaning their diet is greater than 70% meat. They're not eating plants a whole lot in the wild, so this mutation isn't killing a whole lot of wild cats. The UGT1A6 gene's enzyme is responsible for glucuronidating phenols, cyclic terpenes, and benzene-based compounds. Limonene and terpeniol are cyclic terpenes that are very prevalent in cannabis. Even cannabinoids themselves are terpenophenolic, meaning they're part terpene and part phenol. So please, Please don't blow smoke in your cat's face. Although cannabis isn't toxic for humans, pets are different animals, and they have different physiology. They don't metabolize things the same way that we humans do. No, you cannot have.